Hey guys, Lucas here from T-Rex Arms. I'm joined by Mike of Grand Thumb fame. We're out here in Oregon doing another shoot, so we thought we'd do another video for you guys. And this time we're gonna talk about belts and different kit and go over some of the things that we use. So Mike, why don't you start with yours? Sure, let's talk about my belt kit personally. So I like to have mine threaded directly onto my pants. Lots of different options. Moving over from there, I've got my gloves hanging right here. There are better options than what I have. Moving up to the mags, I use S-Tac Kiwis. I think they're a good balance of speed and retention. Lots of different options there. Prefer them if you want to look super cool. Woodland camo, of course. Moving back from my magazine pouches, we have the Blue Force Gear Marco. It's basically to dispense chem lights. If you need it, you know why you need it. We're not going to get too big into it. I do think that it's superior to those two inch or those four inch chem sticks that are typically used. Moving back from there, we have the Blue Force Gear Micro Trauma Now pouch. I prefer it because it's simple, it's small. It sits nicely against me so that it's not protruding too much. It's not affecting how I run, it has everything I need. Now, we've talked about this a little bit, but if you don't know how to use the equipment, you should, you should get training. But like Lucas pointed out, um, if you don't know how to use it, somebody could possibly come who does know how to use right. it. But nonetheless, get the training. Yep. Otherwise you don't For look sure. cool. For sure. I have most of my back here pretty empty. That way I'm not impeding myself if I have to sit down and get in the car, that type of stuff. Moving over to the holster, I'm using the Safari Land. 6354DO, kind of the go-to, I would say one of the gold standards mm -hmm. in red dot equipped optic holster pistol things. Yep. That was a crappy way of saying that. But, but it totally works. It totally works. It works off the ALS system, which means to release a pistol, you have to depress that nub and it releases it, otherwise it is locked. And I am using the mid-ride with the, uh, this is actually from you, it's your little uh, yep. leg strap right there and that keeps it secure because sometimes if you don't have that and you try to pull up on it, the holster will pull out and you won't Yeah, you You'll won't have an inconsistent to, draw, it won't precisely. be straight up and down and you lose some consistency right there. And one quick note, the belt I'm using is the Alonso Defense uh, Group Emissary Gun Belt. I helped design it, I'm a big fan of it, but there are better options out there if you're doing certain types of mission sets, and we're gonna go ahead and talk about those right now. Cool, we'll all right. Back to that. So let's go over here, I've got a few other belts. These are a couple of the belts that I use. A while back I was working with uh, Coyote Tactical Solutions, and we designed a belt called the Orion, and this is something that we offer. I know it's hard for us to keep that in stock because there's a lot of demand on this belt system. Basically, it's a, it's a regular, a sleeve system you've got an inner belt that goes inside you can run one that's weight rated that's got a d-ring for repelling operations different things like that the inner belt that we offer is not super high speed you're not going to want to repel from it you know it doesn't have a d-ring a lot of us don't need to do that i don't need that so it's a cheap solution that allows you to run this belt this is a, it has a panel system so you can run your belt throughout the system you can hook a holster this is a Safari Land UBL mid-ride, and you see I have it exposed here so I can run that or run other holsters from other companies if I was like running a Blade Tech or a different Safari Land holster. On this belt, it's pretty simple. I have the Kiwi system as well, and we have ours set up exactly the same, two pistol, one rifle. There's other guys out there that say you really should carry more ammo, three pistol mags, maybe two rifle. And that's all depending on your operation and what you're doing and your mission set. For me, when I'm on the range doing what I'm doing or working with an agency or working with other guys, two pistol mags gets me through one rifle mag and I can run extra rifle mags on my kit and I'm sure that you do the same. Precisely. On this belt, I run a dump pouch. Now I do not subscribe to the, uh, the SOP of storing all my empty magazines while I'm reloading my rifle. And there's a few reasons for that. But the primary reason I run a dump pouch is for storing full magazines if I'm moving up to shoot a course of fire or I have got my phone or food or, or drinks, like today I had my Gatorade in there. It's for admin purposes, it's not just for magazines. That's something that people should understand. I typically have a medical kit on here, very similar to uh, Mike's. I've got everything in there that I, that I know how to use and there's other stuff in there that I'm not super trained on like needles and decompressions and things like that that, that other guys can use when I'm with them if they're you know 18 deltas or paramedics or whatever they happen to be. Same thing, I'm running this Fireland UBL mid-ride. I've got one of our Ragnarok holsters on here with the QLS fork receiver system. This is one of my favorites. It gives the offset so you can clear this, whole, this pistol from kit if you're wearing a lot of gear. So that's something I'm a big fan of. Moving over real fast, so this is sort of my, I can run this belt on top of jackets and on top of whatever I'm wearing, but if I want to go for something a little more slick, I use the Stormrider gear belt. And this is a two-piece system, so I have a Velcro inner belt, which it has a uh, loop on the outside, and then this belt has hook on the inside. There's a bunch of belts like this on the market, the Ronin Senchi, which is issued to a bunch of guys. It's weight rated, you can repel from it, things like that. This one, it fastens with Velcro and this little tab, so would I want to repel from this in an emergency? Probably, probably not. Like if I had to, and it's my life, or you know, 
Uh, then yeah, if, if it's risky, I'll do it. You could do it. You could do it. I may, I may not survive, but if that's the only option, I'll do it. So this belt I use for competitions, USPSA, and for this trip specifically, I kind of built it out for a little more gear. So I put a dump pouch on there for admin stuff. All right now I've got some magazines and trash and different things like that. I've got pistol mags up front. These are prototype pouches we'll be releasing soon at T-Rex Arms. Prototype rifle pouch. We don't need to get into all that. But, no, we can uh, talk about that later, right? Exactly. We'll okay. do another video next time we get together and shoot. And then I've got a Ragnarok set up the exact same way. I can interchange holsters. This one's for a Glock without a weapon light. And that's how I run this kit. Tourniquet up front because I don't have a full med kit on here, but I always have a tourniquet on me. And that's what I like to do. And in front, I've got real estate I'm not using. And that's that's a pretty good place to put one unless you do a lot of work from prone, which we're not doing today. Which no, is nice. not a whole lot of. And then I did this right before I left through a Cry Smart Pouch. This is pretty cool because it expands. And so I can put a water bottle back there, but I actually am just running my phone. So not super tactical, but it works for me on the range. And all this comes down to is, you know, what is your mission set? What do you need your kit for? And then developing your kit for that. So I'm not a super high speed operator. I'm a performance shooter who's on the flat range a lot. So there's a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily need or have. And that's just because I, I'm using what I need for my job and what I do. So um, do we have any closing remarks about, do you have any that you want to bring up on no, not much. Got. Just figure out what you need and don't do more than that. A lot of people get into the mindset of putting too much on their belt. Oh, yes, absolutely. And the more you have on your belt, the more it's going to shift around as you run. It just sucks. Yeah. So keep it to what you need. Keep it simple. Don't go beyond that. You can probably do a lot more with a lot less, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And something that I, that's, that's happened in a lot of sort of my shooting career is my kit has started very slim, like just pistol mags, just pistol, and then I've gone, hmm, I need to be able to carry my phone on me for filming people or students, slow-mo. Ooh, I need a dump pouch because I want to walk up to the line with four extra loaded mags and all my caddies loaded, and then I can start reloading all my carriers. So as you shoot and as you do different things, your kit will kind of get tailored to what you're doing. So I see a lot of guys that go on the internet and they see my belt set up, or they see Mike's belt set up, and they're gonna go, oh, I'm just gonna copy that whole thing. Well, they may not need a couple pieces off of that or this or that. So start building what you think you are going to need as you hit the range, as you do diff different things. It's going to evolve, it's going to change, and that's a good thing. So definitely it comes down to you getting out there and using your kit, figuring out what works for you. I run kit from a lot of different companies. Obviously, we make some different things. I'm running a belt from another company that I highly respect, Storm Rider Gear. We've got our own belt that's a little bit different for different things. Mike, you've got a belt that you designed with uh, Lonzo Defense. You've got one of our belts mm -hmm. you run for some stuff. We all use gear from other companies and reputable people and people that we like, and that's something that's very important to both of us. Absolutely. So, um, until next time, I'm Lucas from T-Rex Arms, and you are Mike from Grand Thumb. And if you guys have any suggestions you'd like to give us of other videos you'd like to see us do, we'll be getting together a lot more in the future. We could potentially do some videos long distance with black backgrounds, more <laughs> style. We could possibly do that. And so we could easily do some of that. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Train hard, stay safe. trained because otherwise you don't look cool. That's right, because looking cool is lame. All right. <laughs> Unless you look cool shooting. Then it's cool. Then you're cool. Alright, Charles, <sighs> that was like 15 minutes. How long was that?